Hello everybody, this is Danny from Deep South Homestead. Um, guys, I want to talk to you a little bit today about not getting discouraged. Because it seems like there's a ton of people out there that's getting really, really discouraged. Our emails are just piling in uh, about people having problems with their gardens. Now some are doing really well, and they're really telling us about how well their garden's doing, but we're getting a lot of emails about people being really discouraged with their gardens because of things that's beyond their control at this moment. Not that they've done anything wrong. Uh, we've got tons of emails of people thanking us for doing the Grazon uh, video. Because, let's just be honest, most everybody's trying to go as organic as possible. They're trying to do everything as right as possible. They're trying to use as much organic material as possible to grow some of the most healthy food that they can for their families, only to have it all destroyed because of a herbicide that was put into either the manure or the hay or the straw or something other that they're using I mean guys look and I'll I'll be the first to say that it is totally frustrating you know I mean it happened to me this year uh, it actually happened to me a couple of years ago I just didn't know what it was we thought it was the cold weather had gotten our plants because we planted a little early but come to find out it was Grazon it was 2,4-D weed killer, Remedy, all these things are all mixed in together on these hay and and when the animals eat it, the manure, you know, guys, it just passes through the animals and some of the things that really bothers me is, uh, we've talked about this in previous videos, is people who are just all hyped up about grass-fed beef and, and I think about, Wanda and I were talking about this, about uh, all the goats and the cows that eat hay and people using the milk from them and any of you who know anything about a mother and a child know that a mama can eat something that's really gassy and it goes through her into the baby's milk and the baby gets gassy and ends up with colic and all this different stuff animals are no different if that mama's eating something you know that's bad it goes right on through her into the milk and goes right into that baby you know you get a calf or a, or a baby kid goat or something like that uh, they're all you know subject to the same problems so it's easy to get discouraged it seems like the harder we try to do what's right the worse it gets you know and and I'm guys some things are just some people don't have a choice unless you have lots of land where you can raise your own hay or where you can let your animals free range and not have to worry about bringing in hay or and you can collect your own manure from your farm and you're really self-sufficient in those areas a lot of us are stuck I mean my farm here I've sold down to just 10 acres I was thinking 10 acres would get me by now I'm wishing that I hadn't because I really need the extra land back now for grazing and stuff for my cows because I'm having to buy hay and now I'm having to be really picky about where I get hay from and then when I buy it, I gotta buy it in huge quantities to ensure that I get hay that's not chemically tainted. So don't get discouraged. There is hope. And I know what really, I guess what hurts me more than anything else is I see people's letters that they're writing to me or emails. They only have a small spot to garden and they've messed around and got a herbicide in it and now they don't have anywhere to grow and they're limited on funds these type of things and it can be very discouraging and for them I do feel their pain uh, the only thing I can tell people is is if you end up with raised beds or something in a small urban setting and it ends up with a herbicide chemical like Grazon or Remedy or 2,4-D weed killer or something other gets into it. Uh, 
is to switch over to grow bags because grow bags are not that expensive and you could set up like I have in my greenhouse here I have concrete blocks with some uh, 2 by 10s or 2 by 12s and laid on top of them with pots sitting on top of them you could do that to get yourself by you know to be able to make it but guys it's just it is totally frustrating I mean really our country has just I don't know I, I have to be careful when I make these videos because I can really get irate about things like Grazon and stuff like that I, I mean I can lose it I can totally lose it because I feel people's pain I know how I felt in my greenhouse when it hit me I was like what you know and, I was, and it just made me so angry it took me probably about three weeks just to cool down and and I don't know that I'm really over it now because I mean I'm still aggravated even though I've cleaned the greenhouse up and I've got it out of there and everything I've, it still frustrates me to know that that people are getting shafted and losing their entire crops because a lot of people spend a lot of money on these uh, plants and vegetables and dirt and stuff like this or loads of compost being brought in only to find out that it's tainted and they can't really use it until they have the chemicals pulled out of it you know through sunflowers or corn or any other monocots grass or whatever uh, that you know can pull it out of it but guys there's just and, and this is not the only thing we're getting hit now with with new insects Now I did a video here the other day and uh, I had to go back and actually change the name of the video because I thought I had a stink bug infestation on my tree. Well, it, typically it is a stink bug. And a lot of you subscribers turned me on to the fact that these were kudzu bugs that was on my fig trees. Well, I thought they were just baby stink bugs. But upon deeper research and really catching some of them and getting up close looking at them, it is the kudzu bug. Now, this bug was, came in here in uh, 2000, I think it was 9 or 12, somewhere along in there, in, into the uh, state of Georgia on a load, uh, shipment of stuff from Asia. And, and and now it's done spread through the Carolinas. Now it's headed down into Alabama, and it has made it into southern Mississippi now. Now this is the first year we've actually seen them. We've never seen them before. This is our first year. But it tells me that they're here now. And a lot of us are having trouble. People they send me emails about their squash plants, uh, cucumber plants, all this stuff. Vine borers hitting their pumpkins or squash. Uh, squash bugs hitting their squash, pickle worms hitting their squash. What can I do? You know, and they're getting totally just wiped out. You know, man, and we got no telling how many comments and, and, and emails and stuff about, oh my God, the squash plants you're pulling up, throwing away look better than mine ever thought about looking, and you're throwing yours away. You know, and you know, I mean, it is what it is. We had a good year. Uh, we're trying to actively learn how to work around insects and to be able to beat them at their own game if you kind of want to say it that way uh, and, and guys I understand the frustration when it happens and you've got the beautiful squash plants out there and you come home and in one day they're all wilted down and you lose them by the end of the week you know you didn't get any squash off of them and you spent good earned money uh, buying plants or, or starting plants from seeds you worked with them got beautiful plants and got them up and got them going and only to have a bug to hit them and you know and we try to do it organically and, and a lot of people sending me emails are going like dude I'm just using spray I don't care you know and hey if that's what you need to do you know then you need to do it uh, we are not people keep telling us we could use neem oil and all these kind of things we're not using anything yet we're not going to unless we just absolutely cannot do it naturally now we may come to that point I don't know but it can be frustrating and it can really be discouraging and lots of people have said I'm just giving up and I try to encourage them don't give up uh, even people like me who are seasoned gardeners are having to relearn everything because I mean I know the basics and when I see problems uh, it I already know basically what direction I'm headed in I just may not understand even at my age and my experience everything that's happening in the grand solar minimum guys you got to realize america has never had a grand solar minimum we're not old enough as a nation to have had a grand solar minimum so we have no history about how to deal with it 
So it's new to all of us. And this year, uh, all my stuff is coming in later than it normally would because it stayed colder longer earlier. A lot stayed colder longer earlier into the spring, and then it lasted later into the spring. And even like I showed in one of my videos just yesterday, the, the dirt in my greenhouse back here is still cold. And that greenhouse gets up to 90 degrees on the inside. But that dirt is still cold. Because the nighttime temps keep dropping down to into the 60s and right at 70s. So the plants don't know what to do. They're confused. That's just part of the grand solar minimum. And some people... I've got tons of emails telling me, oh, this is a conspiracy theorist thing. God, it is not a conspiracy theorist thing. Uh, the Grand Solar Minimum has, there, there's history to prove that it happens periodically. And we don't have any history of it here. We have to go back to the European nations and stuff like that. There are older nations that actually can tell us a little bit about, through their history, about what went on. Uh, what volcanoes were erupting, earthquakes, weather patterns, uh, empires rising and falling and all this kind of stuff. We just have to, you know, we have to go back and, and look at those things because it's new to all of us. This is not something that some of us know a lot about and others don't because as a nation, we haven't been through it before. Now, we've been through solar minimums, just not a grand solar minimum like we're facing. And, I mean, you take, like, today, right now, I'm sitting here, the heat index today is 103 degrees where I'm at here. Yesterday, at exactly this same time, it was 77 degrees. Now, is that not a difference? No wonder the plants are confused. Hell, I'm confused, and I'm sitting here because of the heat. I want to know why it's that way. It used to wasn't that way, and I realized that it's the, it's the grand solar minimum. It's the weather patterns. And, and man is tampering with it, too. I understand the uh, weather anomalies and the weather manipulations and all that kind of stuff. The geoengineering, I understand all that stuff. It's very frustrating to uh, those of us who literally depend on our food from our place to survive. Now, Wanda and I today, Wanda needed a few little things from the grocery store that were a couple of staple things that we just can't grow here or can't do here. So we went to our local food giant and you have to understand we don't go to a grocery store on a weekly basis. We don't go on a bi-weekly basis. We usually don't go on a monthly basis now. So when we walk into a grocery store you got to understand we're used to seeing it like it was uh, it's been four months since I've been in the grocery store. Okay, I went into Walmart the other day, first time in four months. So we went today to a food giant, uh, first time in four months for me. Uh, Wanda's uh, been one time in, I think. We see the difference because we remember what it used to look like and what it looks like now. I'm going to be honest with you. Today, this is uh, June the 25th. Today, in this big store, and now in our small town, if 30 people that was preppers walked in that store, and each one of them bought two or three, four things of staple items in that store, that store would be cleaned out. Just 30 people. Because everything was brought down into small quantities on the shelves, lots of empty space everywhere, uh, now, the things that were still full were things like tater chip aisle, dollar aisle, uh, beer aisle, you know, junk stuff. Junk food aisles were still packed. Staple goods. You know, oatmeal, grits, uh, corn, flour, things like this, uh, regular flour, uh, corn meal, things of this nature that you would buy, salt, sugars. Things like this, oils, were very limited in this store. And Wanda walked out and she said, Oh my gosh, I have never seen stores that empty. It looks like it's full, 
But to someone like us who's been there when it was really full back in January or December of this past year and February, and to walk into it now all these months later, we see the difference. They have stuff kind of spaced out on shelves. Nothing's in behind them. All, everything in behind is empty. And we both looked at each other and said, you know, 30 people could wipe that store out in one day. Literally, wipe it out in one day. And there'd be nothing left in that store but just junk food. Tater chips and Fritos and Cheetos and, you know, stuff, ice cream in the buckets and things like that. The staple goods in that store would be wiped out. That was an eye-opener to us. It's already told us we're already headed in the direction of running out of food and people just haven't come to the realization yet. We noticed, we sit and watch the people uh, going and coming from the store. Nobody had any large amount of anything. They all walked out with one or two bags in their hand. Usually you see people coming out with buggies, pushing rounded up buggies full, you know. Didn't see that. Everybody came out toting one or two little bags in their hands. Which means one of two things. Either the store didn't have what the people needed, or people have thrown caution to the wind and said, you know, I'll just run in and pick up a couple things, not worry about it tomorrow, everything will be there, it'll still be there, it's all going to be fine. COVID's over, not going to worry about it. And they're not worried about anything. It's, it's one of those two things, I'll assure you of that. But guys, please do not stop growing your own food. And I'm and lots of people are contacting us through emails asking, do we have certain seeds? They can't find seeds that they need. Guys, I don't have a huge amount of seeds this year. I usually plant a lot of stuff to save seed from. But Wanda and I have a, you know, we've tried to build a pretty good seed bank. And we we do put seeds on our Etsy store that we do have uh, available. It's just that this year we were more focused on providing food for ourselves than we were for planting se crops for seeds. Now we did plant some crops for seeds that we're going to be testing. And if we have success with them uh, when we test them, then and they turn out to be really good quality and stuff we'll put up limited supplies on our etsy store uh, you know to be able to help everybody out if our seeds are viable and they're all because i don't just want to sell a seed if i know it's not any good i want to test it to make sure that it's good and it comes back true to itself i really want to make sure that everything is good with that I mean, that's what I do here at Deep South Homestead. Now, we still have plenty of Cherokee tan pumpkins and stuff like that. But a lot of the other seeds, we are um, getting a little bit low on. So we're cutting back on a lot of things in our Etsy stores so that we make sure that we don't run out and we have enough to keep our crops going. But, you know, just keep checking our Etsy store. We will have some things added as we get them in so that we can help other homesteaders out there be able to um, stay where they can produce food. I mean, we had, a, we had a blow this year that we normally wasn't expecting to have. Our state passed new laws and rules about selling sweet potato slips. Uh, we were all geared up planning on selling tons of sweet potato slips and... They passed laws that said we can't ship them out of our state now. You know, unless they're USDA certified and all this kind of stuff. And lots of states are making rules where you can't ship seeds into certain states because it's illegal now to ship some things. Uh, we went to get certain peach trees brought into our state this year here where we're at because we wanted some on our homestead. You can't ship peach trees in Mississippi anymore. So we just got totally screwed on a lot of things this year. So guys, it is discouraging about what's going on around us. It seems like every way that we turn, somebody is coming after us from some direction trying to stop us from being able to be successful at what we do. But guys, hang in there. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, 
try to find alternative ways. That's what we're doing here. I mean, you look behind me here. I got this greenhouse and I have another one right there that I'm working on. We're moving to growing our fruit trees in greenhouses in one of them and our cool weather crops in one and we're going to do our summer crops in the other one. I mean, we're actively trying our best to create an environment that allows us to be able to grow our vegetables. We proved this year by using this greenhouse right here for fruit trees and summer vegetables that they outproduce anything in the field. I mean, y'all saw, the watch this videos on this greenhouse, y'all saw three cucumber plants that provided us with over 400 cucumbers. We had four plants in the front garden. We had three plants on a hill behind the security cabin. Between the two of those plants, we might have got 15 cucumbers. Out of all of them, all seven or eight that we had planted, we might have got 15 cucumbers before they were destroyed by the weather. It was either too hot, the insects got to them, root nematodes in the ground, something got all of them. So guys, that's why we're doing this right here. Our fruit trees in here, we planted dwarf peach trees in here from Grower Solutions. They were little sticks when I got them, about three feet tall. I put them in the greenhouse, put them in a rich dirt in a pot that we made our own self here on our own homestead because we make our own dirt here. And the same year I planted them, get this now, four months later we harvested peaches off of them. Now how crazy is that? I have never had that happen. And now them things is five and six feet tall. So it can be done. And later this winter, I plan on showing you guys how to... We've been, we've been asked this question. Well, Danny, how in a greenhouse, high tunnel slash greenhouse, I turned this high tunnel into a greenhouse, how are you going to get the chill hours on the fruit trees? Well, this winter, I'm going to show y'all how to make that happen. And we're hoping that it works because this is my first year doing this. I'm not a veteran at this. And I did build greenhouses for people before. I put one up for my parents who raised vegetables and sold out of them. But as far as having a high sidewall like this that I converted over to a greenhouse, this is my first year growing in one of them. Now, so far, everything has worked out really good. Now, we've learned some lessons. We've... Uh, We've had some white fly problems we've had to deal with. We've had some flea beetle problems we've had to deal with. We had some ant problems we had to deal with. You know, and we're actively learning. And every time we learn something, we try to come to you guys with it and we try to show you what we've learned. Uh, we have a black 40% shade cloth on this one that has worked really well. After talking to Grower Solutions, because these greenhouses are identical in size, and the location, this one right here, we're going to put a white shade cloth on it that is 40%. We're going to test them side by side to see what the temperature differences is inside the greenhouses so we know whether or not if we might need to change this one or if we might need to change that one. We gotta, we gotta learn. We're putting a whole different fan system in this one than we have in this one. So we are learning as we go how to create a growing environment that is suitable to growing really good vegetables. Now y'all see our pepper plants in this one here on the previous video? They are loaded with peppers. I mean, we are growing more peppers than we ever imagined growing. Had we not got Grazon in this one right here, we would have more tomatoes out of that greenhouse than we would need in a year ourselves. So the tomatoes worked in the greenhouse. We raised Cherokee yellow wax beans in here. They done fantastic. We actually got four crops off of them where in the field we usually get two before the disease hits them. This coming year, this greenhouse right back here, we're going to be trying English peas in it uh, through the winter months. I mean, there's things we're just experimenting with guys to figure out what we're going to be doing when this weather goes totally wacky on us here. So don't get discouraged because it's easy to get discouraged. I'm learning, we're all learning, 
that's why I'm here on YouTube. Anything I learn, I'm trying to bring it to you guys and say, hey, don't make the mistake I made. Do it this way. You know, this worked for us. Maybe it'll work for you. Now, I'm not saying everything we do works will work for you because you're in a different. You may be in a different zone. You may your humidity levels may be different, but maybe it's a starting point. I know we've gotten more praises and more thank yous from the Grazon video than we have any other video I think we've ever put out. People have finally figured out what's happened to their plants, and guys, I am so thankful that we was able to figure that out and be a blessing to everybody. It, it irritates me that we can't do things naturally like we need to. But guys, that's why we have the homesteading community that we have so we can help one another figure out what's going on with our stuff so we can all do a better job of growing our plants and raising our food and providing good, healthy food for our families. So don't get discouraged. Keep up the good work and keep up good faith and say and, and just keep praying to the Lord that He'll keep giving us wisdom how to beat the Grand Solar Minimum, how to beat the powers to be that seem to want to destroy all the ways that we naturally grow food. And guys, remember, Deep South Homestead is here because we care about helping you as an individual grow your crops. So thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.